Uh, the book of Mark chapter 11. The book of Mark chapter 11. Amen. Again, we do thank God for being here again in this great church. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 11. Amen. Glory be to the name of God. Hallelujah. I got a book that I'm writing called Manifestation Power. And in this book, I'm talking about three principles that the Lord gave me that will bring the church into manifestation. He said, when there is a spirit of revelation, revelation comes to unveil or release a tool in which we should work with. When there is revelation, then there is something that we have to do after God reveals something to us. We have to take the, initi the, the initiation to move upon what God revealed. And when we take the initiative, then we're going to see a manifestation of the revelation. Amen. Amen. So you've got to get a revelation of what God is doing in this set hour. Amen. Amen. But I want to talk tonight. I want to awaken some callings in here tonight. Amen. I believe that if our calling awakens, then we will turn every city upside down. For so long, it's only been the preachers that understood their call. And those that have been seeing in the pews had a short understanding of who they are. And in this latter hour, if we're going to have victory, the entire body of Christ have to understand what God has called them to. Amen. Turn yourself and say, you got a call to. Yeah, you got a call to. And uh, there are times in your life in which the fullness of time comes. In which every believer has a fullness of time. A time in which God allows you to accept his calling. And then there's a time in which we are slowful in accepting his calling. He just bombards our timing. And he himself demands for us to be loosed. And I feel tonight that there is a demand on us to be loosed for the calling of God. Because there's too many murderers, too many murderers, too many uh, sexual assaults, too many, uh, too much stuff happening. And, and there's not enough churches, there's not enough people coming forth in their calling. Amen. We're seeing more sin and we're seeing more disaster. We're seeing more pain and we're not seeing more of church the church that, 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 that stays in the church and in the presence of God for so long a time, we're not seeing the church come forth and manifest what God has imparted into our lives. Amen? Amen. And while we're waiting and while we're sitting back, and I told you that God is not uh, waiting, God is not, we're not waiting on God, God is waiting on us because the Bible says all things were finished at the beginning of time. Which simply means that God has already established where you're going before you got up to go there. Which simply also means that if we don't ever get up to go there, God will cause something to happen in your life to move you to, toward a point of destiny. Uh, don't you think that you're your own free world agent? Because God gives us a choice through love to accept the calling of God on our life. But still, we are alive. We're not alive by choice. We are alive by purpose. Understand that. Say, so we're not alive by choice. We are alive by purpose. Come on, I need you to understand that. Let's say it again. Say, so I'm not alive by choice. I'm alive by purpose. Which simply means if I fail to make a choice to choose God, my purpose will eventually cause something to happen to make me choose him. I'm not my own free world agent. God has an assignment, a mandate on my life, and when there's a mandate on your life, it doesn't matter what you're doing at that time. Now, come on, when God gets ready for you to step into that call, and he will cause something to loose you from what you are tied to because there is an assignment on your life of that particular people and that particular timing. Hello? And so there is a timing which is the fullness of timing for our lives in which God says, you tried it your way for a long time. And there's time when God bombards our life and just brings forth our calling. 
Uh, many of us have not even understood our callings. We've been operating in our gifts. And there's a vast difference between operating in your gift and your calling. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Your gift making room for your calling. But there is a calling that God gives every believer. Uh, you, say, you, you were never called to sit up in church. You were never called to be quiet. You were never called to be dormant. You were never called to watch everybody else. There is an awakening sound on the inside of every person that we must hear that sound of awakening in the fullness of time for that particular assignment. There is a people, look at somebody and say, there is a people that's waiting on you. And they're not waiting on your gift. They're waiting on the calling of God in your life. Because the calling of God, the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1 tells us that he's called us to glory and virtue. Come on. There are people that's waiting on us to walk in a realm of glory and virtue, which simply means God will not ignite what he called us to do without us getting the nature of the calling. Amen. Hello. Can I say it again? He will not ignite the fullness of the calling until he gives us the, na the nature that will activate or ignite the calling. And can I say that again? God will never release you into the fullness of your calling until he gives you the very nature of that calling. Hello? So I give you a VCR tonight. I give every person in this room a VCR and a remote control to that VCR. Hello? And that remote control requires a 9-volt battery. You can never cut that VCR on without that remote control. And that remote control can never activate that VCR without a 9-volt battery. You can't have a double A or a triple A come on and try to ignite that remote control because it is not the thing that has been called to activate that VCR. And so when God has given us such a high calling, he gives us a nature to attach to that calling. In other words, God is saying if you're going to operate in ministry, you got to walk in holiness. you got to walk in purity. you got to walk in righteousness. you got to walk in glory. you got to walk in virtue. And there are so many people that's running after the fullness of the call, but not running after the nature of the call. All right. All right. Can I talk to three people? People are hungry for position and titles and churches, and they're not hungry for the nature of God. All right, all right, man. And that's why we got a whole bunch of bootlegged preachers and a whole lot of a bunch of bootlegged apostles, uh, folk who just want to be in charge, uh, don't want to have the nature of God, the attitude of God, the, the come on, the the culture of God. Uh, the, they don't want to have the very attitude. And many times we spend more time trying to perfect our gifts and we never pay attention to the nature of our call. This is why you have good gifted folk who act like a fool outside of church. All right. All right. Because we spend more time trying to bring forth our giftings and we spend less time, come on, igniting the nature of our call. Which simply means this, that God's anointing has been called to activate your gifting. Praise God. Amen. You can't get the anointing without the nature of God. All right. Gifts come without repentance. But the anointing of God will not come without repentance. So repentance means to change your mind. Yeah. 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 Repentance doesn't mean, I, God, forgive me. That you simply said you're sorry for what you did. But repentance means when I ask God to forgive me, I change my mind about what I did. So I don't come back to the altar tomorrow asking God to forgive me for the same thing because I've changed my mind yesterday in repentance. Amen. Glory to God. Awesome word. So it's not give things that draw people. It's not talents that draw people. It's the anointing that draws. Right. That's right. Amen. It's the anointing that breaks the yokes of bondage. And can I tell you something about a yoke? A yoke was a equipment that tied the two oxen together. 
And this word unequally yoked came from the phrase that if I get two oxen, that, that one, if one was lazy and one was very active, and that come on, that, that equipment was designed for two individual animals. If one was very active and one was very inactive, they will be unequally yoked because the machine wasn't designed for an active and an inactive person. It was designed for two active folk. And anytime you could be you could be in church unequally yoked with believers. 